Well, I think <laughs> they're like hardcore lefties, right? And hardcore lefties don't know what with me. Because I look like a Trump supporter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the fact that you're a bald white guy yeah. that's muscly and yeah. tattooed. And does, I do cage you know fighting commentary. I like guns. I hunt. Right. I bow right. hunt. Right. Yeah. I, there's a lot of things that don't line up with the fact that I support universal basic income. I, mm-hmm. I support universal health care. I, well, I was my family was poor when I was young. We were on welfare. I'll mm-hmm. never forget that. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget being on food stamps as mm-hmm. a kid. I'll never forget wondering if we were going to have enough food to eat. Right. And that, in my mind, the system worked with my family and they provided us with assistance and then my parents started making money and we got off of welfare and they started doing really well and then by the time i was in high school they were doing great and they had a thriving business so i i I got to experience how social systems social support systems and social safety nets can really be beneficial to families Mm. And I think they're huge. I think yeah. they're very, very important. And I fully, fully support that. And I am way more left wing than I. It, it, the only things that I think of that I, I think people could point to that are right wing with me are gun control. Like I believe in the Second Amendment because I, I, I believe there's times where you're going to have to, if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, if the wrong thing happens, the wrong person invades your property, tries to harm your family. You want to be able to defend yourself. We don't live in a world where there's no guns. We don't mm-hmm. live in a world where it's even and equal and people are un- unanimously generous and kind and no one's violent. That's not the reality of the world we live in. And so because the Second Amendment does exist and because we do have gun rights, I don't, I don't agree with stripping those rights from people. I don't agree with this uh, idea that the problem is guns. I think the problem is human beings. Mm. I think the problem is human beings and human behavior, and I think it's exacerbated by social issues. And I think that really one of the better ways to stop violence in this country is to alleviate it at the bottom floor, which is poverty. <clears throat> poverty and crime ridden communities. And mm. I think it's one of, one of the most frustrating things to me when I look at our, our culture is like what we were talking about earlier, that there's there are these communities that have yeah. been largely ignored. Yep by charitable ventures. Mm-hmm. Like they just don't put enough time or effort into it. The government will spend trillions of dollars in Iraq. They'll give no bid contracts to Halliburton to rebuild shit we blew up, but they don't do anything with yeah. these impoverished communities. So I- this dude seemed like a stand-up guy to me. He seemed like an extremely stand-up guy. And the fact that people get all butt hurt because you don't agree with every single thing that they want you to agree with that, that, that's annoying as hell, man. I mean, the fact this guy went from the bottom to the top, literally, that's that's his life story from the bottom to the top. And his life and his understanding of life is from the bottom to the top. So whenever he speaks off of top knowledge, <laughs> the bottom get offended. <laughs> you speak off of bottom knowledge, the top get offended. I'm sorry. Whenever you speak off of left knowledge and right knowledge and vice versa, some people want you to buy into every single thing that they agree with. And it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous, man. Um, so I think it's people like this, like Joe Rogan, who have those experiences of the all around who's been able to deal with people from all walks of life who should be able to speak the truth to people if that makes any sense so i really don't see why a whole bunch of well yeah i do i see why i I see why left wingers um um don't like them um but i also see why left wingers love them and honestly i don't see why right wingers don't like them I don't see because a lot of the stuff that he supports, you would think that a lot of right wingers would not like him for that. And it's probably some that don't like him for that because it's a, we, we are entitled sometimes that we believe that everything we say is right. And everyone within earshot should agree with us for wanting to some, wanting people to understand and just run with us and roll with us blindly um, without 
I don't know, without questioning where we coming from. So, yeah, I based off what he said so far, I don't see why we're um, left-wingers. Um, well, yeah, I do. I, I see Build why. shit we blew up. But they don't do anything with yeah. these impoverished communities. So I'm well, super left-wing in mm. most ways. And they said, Joe Rogan's brash personality has been part of his appeal as a podcaster. And I mean, I... I haven't seen or heard the word brash in long enough that I looked it up. And it, it was uh, self-assertive in a rude or overbearing way. Hmm. And I thought to myself, is Joe Rogan brash? It's like, <laughs> you just gave a spiel about how important it is to say when you're wrong, to admit you have an ego. Have you ever heard a brash or over overbearing person I mean, like the definition of overbearing is the guy that never fucking admits he's wrong, or right? doesn't listen, and blah blah blah. It's like the notion that that you could be described as brash. To me, it betrayed. I was like, they they're not even trying to hide the fact. The the problem of having two very distinct ideologies is a huge issue too, because most people they're kind of in the center mm -hmm. of a lot of ideas. Right. Like most people like they'll say, well, you have to be disciplined. And, you know, that's part of the problem with a lot of people in this life is that a lot of people are lazy mm -hmm. and a lot of people fall victim to a lot of, you know, psychological traps and they, you know, they don't follow through on their life. They don't, they don't develop discipline. They don't, they don't do what they need to do in their life. Sound like he is talking to me, man. He is speaking to my soul with this one right here, bro. <laughs> Sometimes, man, I, I can be on a roll and, and the sky's the limit. And the only thing that holds me back is me. And a lot of people out there, they fail to accept that part about themselves, that the only thing holding them back is them. They want to blame everybody else and everything else because it's cool to do. And they see other people doing it and they say, you know what, I'm going to do it too. It's not my fault, it's your fault. They do that to my daggone daughter. My daughter is a school teacher, and she does her best to put together um, these, these lessons for these young children, for them to learn. And whenever she calls up a parent who's, who's still in that mentality of victimhood, they yell at her as if she is not trying to help their, um, um, their, their child. They say, no, you're not teaching them right, and you're not this, and you're not that. And if you was paying them attention, then you and all we're asking you to do is just to read to them when they come home to you. All we're asking you to do is do the, I mean, just just be there with them and help them do their homework or their assignment, their assignments. We just want you to take the information that we're teaching them, and you do the same when they get home. That's it. But because you're lazy and you feel like you can just drop your kid off and it's gonna ma and that child is just gonna magically become this scholar without your doing, nah. Then you're not just gonna skate through just okay keeping them alive and then they just be great. No, that's not how life works. You got to play a part in this too. So a lot of people do have that 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 mentality that laziness about them. And I'm one of them people who I'm trying to get better and better and better by the day. If you like this type of um, content, please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, please. Also, the notification bell so that when we do release something else, you'll be first to be notified. Okay. Their life, they don't, they don't develop discipline. They don't, they don't do what they need to do in their life. But also, what was their childhood like? Like how, what, what kind of modeling did they have when they were young? What kind of abuse did they experience when they were young? Like how much psychological damage did they have from their, like no one's starting off at the same, like starting Nobody, mm -hmm. nobody. Like we're, we're starting off at wildly different places in life and the right never, never wants to acknowledge that mm. for whatever reason. They're, they're this, the ideology that comes with that, if it's, if it's rigid, if you're just following the doctrine, it's like pull yourself up by your bootstraps, like. I'm, I'm with you on that, Joe Rogan. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. We need assistance. We need some help. We're coming from behind. Hey, but the people that need behind, that, that's coming from behind, need that help. You're going to have to help yourself too. No bull. Because I came from an extremely traumatic background. <laughs>
my childhood was not something that any of you will want. I bet money on it. But that didn't hold me back from being who I am, for being a father that I've never seen in my community, for being a husband that I've never seen in my community. Yeah, I decided that my life will be, my children's lives will be different because of my traumas. What I went through, they will never go through. What I seen, they will never see. Those type of um, decisions that some people make. Some people can't make those decisions, though. Some people dive deep into drugs and alcohol or just depression, anxiety, a bunch of other things. And they just can never get over that hump. They can never get out of that slump. That mind is completely shut down and they believe, nope, I, I was treated like this. And, it's, and and I'm always going to tell my story because people need to know that I was treated bad. Okay, when are you going to get it together? But they're right. Some some sides. I don't know if it's just the right that believe that people should pull themselves up by the bootstrap. I know some people on the left. I'm one of them people um, that used that's in the middle. I'm in the middle. <laughs> I used to be far left and I just started moving, moving, moving. I'm in the middle now. I'm definitely in the middle. And the doctrine, it's like pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Like you live in the south side of Chicago, you think you could just pull yourself up by your bootstraps? Mm -hmm. You're crazy. Like if there was a wild west type neighborhood for white people. Mm -hmm. White people are shooting people the same way people are getting shot in the south side of Chicago. They would be freaking the fuck out. Yeah, they Can would. Can you imagine if there was a place like that? Yeah, they like would. Like if Tucson, Arizona was just like shootouts yeah, in would. the street. Yeah, like they would. Like on a, 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 a weekend of gang violence in Chicago is, is occasionally <coughs> stunning. Yeah. Stunning numbers. Yeah, there can be like 50 people shot in a weekend uh, at its worst. And imagine if that same scenario was playing out in right-wing neighborhoods. In right wing, mm -hmm. all white neighborhoods, if they were basically like fucking Jesse James in it, mm -hmm. they would change something immediately to make sure that that not happen. I bet your money on that. All white neighborhoods, if they were basically like Jesse fucking James. Jesse James in it, <laughs> and just out there shooting each other, be a very what, what, very different discussion. Yeah, I think so. When very it comes to the, these places that have just had intergenerational poverty intergenerational vi violence intergenerational single parent homes redlining laws yeah um i mean the the equilibrium we're at at the country in the country right now seems really dysfunctional to me because basically what you have is um you know you have a right wing media that will they they will talk about things like uh you know the constant drive-by shootings and kids getting caught uh you know usually black kids getting caught in the crossfire and they, they'll talk about the insane homicide rate for for young black men which is the number one cause of death for for black men in their 20s but they'll do it in a way where you know it's about political point scoring right it's like when tucker carlson talks about you know black on black crime and the problem of homicide, you don't get the sense that he's deeply motivated to actually focus on this and, and rebuild these communities. Um, and you know, maybe I'm slandering his motives, but uh, I think you know one doesn't get one gets a sense that the first purpose of raising those points is to point the finger at, at Democrats, Democrat-controlled cities, and uh, you know, just partisan point scoring, right? And so that's what you have on the right, basically. And what we have on the left is anyone who mentions these problems, right? You mention the fact that homicide is the number one cause of death for for black men in their 20s and for no other race of men. A and you try to tug at people's heartstrings for these stories of, you know, little girls dressed up in bumblebee costumes for, for Halloween getting caught in the crossfire, and the wider consequences of growing up in such environments. Well, I wanted to hear the rest of that. <laughs> that was a great conversation, man. That was a great, these type of conversations that I like to have. And honestly, I like to have these type of conversations so I can listen. I just like to listen. I like to start conversations so that I can listen. That's so I can say so much, but just to listen. 
I learned that I learn more when I'm not talking as much. But I want to hear what y'all got to say about this in the comments below. And if you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I am Van, and now we are all the LFR family. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video, hopefully inside of the Patreon as well. You all have been amazing. Thank y'all so much for clicking play um, on all of my videos. Um, I really, really, really appreciate it. You just don't know. I'll see y'all next time, all right? Love y'all.